Hi, Facebook. It's been a while, but I um, wanted to hop on because I'm trying to do these lives more regularly and so that I can get you really good, awesome information. And so this month I'm focusing all about gut health. So you might have seen a lot of posts and a lot of just different material to give you the best information possible. Um, and the reason that I'm focusing on gut health this month, especially, is because in January we tend to be really inundated with a lot of information about like quick diets and quick fixes and detoxing and there can be a lot of noise in the nutrition community around this and so the reason I wanted to start with gut health is because when you're looking to heal your body the best place to start is really working on your digestive health because your digestion is key for so many different processes so it not only affects how you feel and like a bloating and gas level but affects how your entire body feels from like your energy levels and your mood gut issues can also be related to like joint pain and inflammation brain fog poor concentration and so it really really starts with the gut because that's our primary immune barrier so I have some questions that came in this month that I thought were really good. And so I'm gonna focus our time to answering those. And if you did want to like pop on, ask some questions or share some comments or experiences that you've had, feel free to do so in the comment box. And I'll try to get to those questions at the end. So um, the first question I got, which I think was awesome, was um, I feel really bloated after I eat beans. And so, and I don't wanna stop eating beans because I know how good they are for me. So what do I do about that? And how do I fix that? And so beans, the reason beans make you bloated is because they have a certain um, type of fiber in them. Uh, called, they're called galacto-oligosaccharides, GOS for short. Um, and they, we, our bodies can't break them down. And so when you eat a lot of beans, what can happen sometimes is um, your body can't break it down and so it's bacteria food. And so bacteria ferment the food and what happens when bacteria ferment food is it creates some gas and some bloating. And so um, while this is like kind of normal, it can also be really disruptive to your life when you're like constantly gassy and farty all the time. Um, and so, Something that I like to do is add in um, enzymes to help your body break down those fibers, um, which can help with the bloating. And so there is um, a fiber called, uh, it's an enzyme called um, alpha-galactosidase, and it's a really long name, I'm really bad at pronouncing it, but um, it's in this supplement. and. Um, I love this supplement. It's called Intolerance Complex, um, and Enzyme Science is the brand of that. Um, and basically, the supplement helps to break down those GOSs, and so it makes it easier for your body to digest certain foods. And so this is actually really good um, if you have... Um, if you, this is also really great, like if you have intolerance to like certain cruciferous vegetables, so like kale and Brussels sprouts and cabbage can also make people a little bit bloated. And so um, that same enzyme helps to break down those um, fibers so that you can tolerate them more because those are really nutritionally dense foods and there's no reason that you need to eliminate them if you don't have to. Um, so I love that question. Some people might be reacting to beans um, and other high FODMAP foods, and I don't know if you've heard that phrase before, but FODMAPs are like a class of food that tend to be highly fermentable, and so people with IBS can't necessarily tolerate them that well. Um, and so sometimes when people are intolerant to those foods, it could be a reflection of like what's going on in the small intestine, and there some, some, can sometimes be um, high amounts of bacteria in the small intestine that are fermenting that food um, before your body can break it down. So those are just some things that that's like, if you have that condition, if you have bacterial overgrowth, definitely work with a practitioner on that. Um, but those enzymes can be like kind of an interesting um, thing to experiment with just in case, you know, um, you don't have a bacterial overgrowth and you just really want to have beans and cruciferous veggies. Um, okay, so my question number two that I got was sometimes probiotics cause me to bloat, and um, why, why is that? And 
So technically probiotics should help with bloating. Um, probiotics are bacteria that um, we take in supplement form that basically help to moderate the gut environment. And so these are really helpful to take after you're, for example, on an, a course of antibiotics because they help to moderate that environment so that bad bacteria and fungi and yeasts and all of those things don't overtake that microbiome. And so probiotics can be really helpful in some circumstances, but there's a lot of different products out there. And so if your probiotic is causing you to bloat, I want to encourage you to look at the ingredient list um, on your supplement because oftentimes probiotics can also contain prebiotics. And like I was talking about earlier with the beans, prebiotics can be bloating. And so prebiotics are fibers that our body can't digest that bacteria do. And so these are really good because that's eventually like what helps to rebuild the gut microbiome. And that's what helps us like sustain our health longer term. Um, but again, if you have like SIBO or bacterial overgrowth, um, they can kind of exacerbate your issues. And so let's see, what do I have here? So certain prebiotics like FOSs um, and inulin are often found in prebiotics and those can be, or in probiotics, and those can be the reason for bloating if you're intolerant to prebiotics. And so that's just something to watch out for on the label. Okay. Uh, my last question that I have all lined up is um, what is going on with gluten? So it seems like there's, um, everyone has gluten issues, intolerances, problems with that. Um, and why does it seem like this is the issue now more than it's ever been before? And so when we see like people coming up with uh, gluten intolerances and gluten sensitivities, there, it's important to realize that there's a spectrum of reactivity with gluten. And so, someone who's highly reactive to the gluten might have celiac disease. And so that is like really an autoimmune reaction where the body's actually um, is destroying its own like gut cells in order to, um, in, in reaction to eating gluten. But on the other end of the spectrum, there is like a gluten sensitivity where we can have it and it might be like a more delayed response. Um, and so that is usually like what we're seeing when we see gluten sensitivities pop up. Um, and so, so why is it now more than ever? I think that there's a few reasons why it is popping up. And I think that if you just look at the way our food industry has changed in the last 50 years, um, that's a huge cause of it. And so agricultural practices first, um, Monsanto is an agricultural company and they own most of the seeds um, of wheat in our country. And so 90% of the wheat that's grown in our country is really the same and it's also genetically modified. And so when you go to Europe, for example, when you go to Italy, they have lots and lots of different strains of wheat and we really only have one. And so um, it just, it, when you're, when you have more strains, when you have more diversity in your diet, you have less reactivity to it. Um, and so let's see, what are other reasons? Um, Okay, so the reason you get a gluten sensitivity is because we have an immune barrier in our gut. And so these are, um, our gut is lined with cells and they're like tightly, tightly connected. Um, and this is actually something I talked about in my YouTube video earlier this month. And so if you haven't gone to see it, feel, feel free to visit the link. I'll drop it in the comment box um, so that you can check that out. But the reason we get food sensitivities is because sometimes those cells that are tightly connected in the gut, they get leaky. And certain molecules that are really hard to digest, like if we're not digesting our food properly, or certain molecules like gluten, like dairy, they're really big, hard to digest, they can seep into the bloodstream and cause an inflammatory reaction. And so that's like what's happening with a food sensitivity. And so that can take anywhere for a few hours to a few days to show up in the body. And one of the reasons that gluten sensitivities are popping up more now is because they're more in the diet. And so those protein molecules 
tend to seep into the bloodstream more. Um, and then also there's a lot more wearing on our gut than there was hundred years ago. And so certain things that can wear on the lining of the gut can be sugar and processed foods and um, certain molecules like gluten, um, but it can also be stress and it can be bacterial imbalances. And so, um, and products that we use, you know, we're exposed to a lot of different um, pesticides and pollution and plastics and all of those are also really harsh on our gut. And so by reducing those foods and really working to heal the gut, you can actually reverse certain sensitivities like gluten sensitivity. Um, but if it goes unchecked and if you continue eating gluten and, you know, um, 10, 20, 30 years from now, um, it is likely that there is a possibility of developing celiac disease. And so it really does lie on a spectrum. And um, it's something that you can reverse and shift and change. Um, but you know, it's, it's about staying in tune with your symptoms and how you're feeling. So again, some of the symptoms of gluten sensitivity can be direct gut issues, right? Like I talked about in the beginning of this video, it could be problems like bloating and gas and gut pain and indigestion but it can also manifest as joint pain or as an autoimmune condition, not even celiac disease. If you have another autoimmune condition like Hashimoto's um, or lupus, you know, like a lot of these issues are cross-reactive cross -reactive with what's actually going on to the gut. Um, and also mood issues. So your gut and your brain have a direct connection. Um, and so if you're struggling with anxiety or depression or um, just, in unstable moods, it's really worthy um, looking into your gut and also oh, brain fog too. So if you have a hard time concentrating um, or focusing, that can be related to poor gut health. Um, and sensitivity. So eliminating gluten is just kind of an interesting, um, an interesting process to embark on because you can just learn a lot about yourself and a lot can shift. And so I would say just like give it a few weeks, try it out. Um, and you really have nothing to lose. Um, you only have things to learn. And so if you're someone who is really struggling with gut health and you want a better handle on it and you really are overwhelmed because there is so much information on the internet, um, I highly recommend you download, I printed this out to give you a little like teaser. Um, I, I have a gut health cheat sheet available for free. And so I dropped the link in the uh, description for this video, but it goes through like all of these really awesome suggestions um, of things that you can do to improve your gut health. Um, and it really is simple. It doesn't need to be super complicated. Um, for example, let's see, starting your day with a big old glass of water. So that's really important for lubricating your gut and getting your bowels moving. And so um, I, I like to drink out of these mason jars at home because I know that if I have like half of one or even a full one when I first wake up, I'm setting my digestion up for success. And so if you want super simple tools like that, um, that are going to improve your gut health, go to that link, download my freebie, and um, I hope that it helps, and I'd love to hear what you think. So if you have any questions, comments, please feel free to reach out, and it was so nice jumping on with you guys, and, um, and I'll see you soon. Bye!